got yourself in some trouble there in the opening. First of all, um, against the Sicilian, I think Bishop C4 is like pretty much a blunder. I think this is just terrible. Good luck, Mason. Let's go like this. Mason is a dangerous guy. Eh? He played a solid game in the sub battle. He played a solid game in the sub battle. Okay, so we're gonna win this pawn here. I'm gonna win this pawn here in the center of the board and his knight basically has to go back where it came from. Okay. The knight can be defended, so it's not like bishop c6 would have trapped it or anything like that. Again, this hits the knight, but he does have this move. Um, is it worth playing? I don't know. I'll just go all the way back. I like my bishop. I don't even think I want to give it up like that. Don't even think I want that trade. We're just going to get the knights out. Bishop out, castle. That's my plan for the next couple moves. Okay. I don't mind. I don't mind. Okay, so he's going to look to get that knight back in the game. Don't think I'm going to let that happen. Because here I'm going to play d5 to stop that move. The knight isn't really trapped. I mean, it can get back in the game. It can get back in the game, but not on my watch. He's going to have to work a little bit harder to get back. It's not going to be a walk in the park. All right, let's just first ask this bishop which diagonal it's going to. Giving it up, the dark squares are really weak. All these light square pawns, dark squares everywhere for me. Even attacking this knight there. And you don't want to have a fianchetto knight. That's for sure. The knight there just doesn't doesn't have any future, really. Doesn't have anywhere to go. Okay. I might take this way. He can't take it back right now. And my bishop's going to come out to c5 next. Which is going to defend this. And I don't think he's going to get that pawn back. A very aggressive move. Wow. Okay, now I'm gonna change a little bit. I'm not just gonna go here. I'm gonna now think about bishop the f4 as an idea. I'd like to have that bishop on that diagonal now that it just opened up. Yeah, I think he's still trying to do this. I'm gonna castle long because I feel like there's gonna be big attacking potential over here and he's opening it up for me it's not for him this is for me that's gonna be made in one so he's gotta gotta defend that i'll be very surprised if he avoids mate here not just in one but in general and mason gg gg got yourself in some trouble there in the opening first of all um against the sicilian i think bishop c4 is like pretty much a blunder. I think this is just terrible. Um, a lot of people at the lower ratings, they have, uh, th they know how to play against uh, e4, e5, and they play knight f3 and bishop there. But the problem is when they, when they play against c5, they play the exact same moves. And it doesn't work like that. Now against c5, if you play these two moves, you might get an okay position, but if the guy plays the e6 line, like the way I did, you see how the game went? It was just, you were losing a pawn already. And almost lost the bishop if you had gone here. So. You can't uh, you can't just pick one opening and play it against uh, everything in, in, for e4. It doesn't, you can't pick one setup and go for it every time. Hey guys, I'll let you get back to the video in just a sec. But I wanted to remind you that today's video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. And for me, Christmas came a little bit early. I just got the new performance package by Manscaped delivered to me. 
There we go. Manscaped created the, uh, the world's first all-in-one men's grooming kit. First of all, the Lawn Mower 3.0. This has the advanced skin-safe technology by Manscaped. It protects you when you're shaving down below. It gives you a lot of confidence and safety. And you don't have to worry about anything. So this thing is absolutely essential for taking care of your downstairs. LED light, flip that on, get your buzz going, nice little charging stand, and you're good to go. We also have the Crop Preserver. This thing is a moisturizer, anti-chafing, so after you just use the lawnmower, go ahead and apply that real quick. You'll be feeling good for the rest of the day. Crop Reviver. This thing's also super important. If you're in a rush or you just wanna you know, quickly revitalize down there, boom, just a little spritz. Smells pretty good. That's all you need, you're on your way. The Weed Whacker. This is the latest addition to the entire package. LED light as well. This thing has the same advanced skin safe technology as the lawnmower. It's for trimming those pesky nose and ear hairs without worrying about anything. And if you pick up the performance package right now, then you will get not only a nice little travel kit here, but also this sweet pair of Manscaped underwear for free. Promo code CHESSBRA, 20% off. And we know we got chess bras everywhere. We got free international shipping to offer you guys as well. So 20% off with the code CHESSBRA. That's something nice to add to your wish list for the holiday season. So hope you guys check it out and pick one up for yourself. But for now, I'll let you get back to the chess. Okay, this is for all the guys that like playing E4, Bishop C4 against the Sicilian. I will show you how it's possible to play it. You absolutely need to play this move pretty soon after you play your bishop there. And you always want to be able to drop your bishop back to that square. And you want to play your pawns like that, literally all the time. You never want to play d4. You want to castle, and it's even good to put your bishop back before you even need to, before you get attacked or anything. But even right here, just put it back. The same way that you might play a London system. If you notice, d4, e3, h3, bishop f4, knight f3, and bishop back is the exact same thing mirrored as this, 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 and this. It's the exact same thing. So that's why this makes a lot of sense. Um, rook on e1, always good. I always like to throw in this move uh, just to take control of that square. Feels logical. Um, get the bishop out. Probably like queen here. Slide the rook over. And, you know, it might not be the best position, but at least I've got all the guys out. You know, they're all developed. They're all working. They're all working hard. Let's go e5. That's already a solid 15 moves out. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna offer him a trade. high hopes for this because in the end game my pawns are going to be on dark squares and his are going to be on light squares. Let's go here and again let's start to cement more pawns on dark squares. No matter where he puts the rook I'll bring my king up I think. Stop the invasion, and we're about to play rook over. Now, I think it's very important that I play this move, so he doesn't get to play that move. I talked about pawns on um, dark squares, which is what I've got, and that's all I'm looking for. And that should be enough to win the game, like just a small thing like that. Um, we'll 
let's go here. I want to bring my bishop here. Obviously, on the last uh, last rank, it's not doing much. Okay, now the king comes up, and I'm covering this square, so this king can never invade. We take like that. I'm gonna take like this and push this pawn up, and then I've got all those covered. Yeah, so now h4, and you see that this guy is just being hit. position this guy here it's hitting this and it's hitting that now we're just bringing the king over and in over and in I can't trade of course let's go back let's start by taking this pawn and we'll go king here Guard our pawn and hit this. Bishop f5 will go here and take it. And that's just a typical end game that you can win. Just because of the way the pawns are. Like all my pawns on dark squares, you couldn't attack anything. GG, James O'Sullivan. <laughs>